was something I knew I would always say about people, like my family and friends, but never about a place. A couple weeks ago, I flew back across the country to my hometown to visit my family for a few days, and in typical, our child has gone off to college fashion. I came home to my childhood bedroom, which was semi-converted into an office and storage area, but it also felt like a snapshot, frozen in time from many years ago. Not a thing out of place. It was lovely to be home, and not just because I had an aged mother to cut fruit for me again, or I was able to take a shower with good water pressure. I mean, I've missed the sunsets, the overgrown rose bush in our front yard that my dad is convinced can grow into a tree, and the hypnotic buzz of suburbia. I've forgotten what it's like to fall asleep to a quiet neighborhood, watching the fluorescent street lights flicker on and the last bits of daylight fade. I've forgotten about how the sun streams in during the morning, the sound of sprinklers hissing on, a sign of another day. I've forgotten the irreplaceable sense of tired routine, but wanting to escape a place that never quite did anything bad to you, it just felt like it didn't do anything at all. Just not have driven in over six months. It's like seven months now. This is crazy to me. My high school car as a sophomore in college. Woo! Whoa! It's half empty. I used to wake up at like 5:30 every day and have to get to school by 6:10. At senior year, I drove a lot of people around. I just remember having some good mems in this car. The radio doesn't work, like the speakers don't work. So I always had to play music from my phone speaker, which was kind of jacked. <laughs> I took the road trip to my Georgetown interview in this car. Crazy, so crazy. Oh, I also remember during the pandemic, we didn't have Wi-Fi in my house, so I couldn't upload YouTube videos. So I drive to our local library and sit in a, the car outside the parking lot and use the library Wi-Fi to upload my YouTube videos. I won't lie, it's easy to get bored. There's really not a lot to do, okay? Every town, in my opinion, has its prime season, and my hometown's prime season was summertime. Even then, I quickly exhausted my list of activities by day three. I live in a place where there are five things to do, total, and if you're from a smaller suburban area, you would know. First, you can go on a river, you know, a lot of people have boats here, go paddle boarding, but my family is too poor to own a boat, so that's kind of out of question. Second, you can go thrifting. There's nothing else to do here. <laughs> this is the same Goodwill where I made one of my earliest videos. I found some of my favorite pieces of clothing here, and it's where I found my love for fashion, so it kind of just brought back a lot of high school memories. Go to the typical teenager hangout spot, aka Target and Barnes and Noble. I'm not quite sure how these two stores became the place to visit, but something about these retail stores just scream Gen Z safe haven to me. And in my defense, I just like Legos, anime, and reading, and Target and Barnes and Noble combined have all three. Fourth, you can go eat out, whether it's for a meal or for a coffee, preferably at a mom and pops. And I won't lie, DC has got my hometown beat for food, but the one place I craved while living in DC for the past year was this little breakfast burger pie joint called Joel's and they had the best pancakes and jam I've ever tasted. Here's my mom and brother looking cute during brunch. And lastly, in classic coming of age movie fashion, you can go on a drive. Especially at sunset while blasting that music, optional and for bonus points. You can do it from a McDonald's parking lot or any other fast food chain works too. And if you get soft serve or fro-yo, ooh, ooh. I think when everyone thinks of Washington State, they think of Evergreens, they think of Twilight, they think of Seattle and the Space Needle, but the Washington I'm from is just desert. I kind of hated it at first. You know, when people ask where you're from and you say Washington State, they expect it to look really lush and green, but I don't know, the sagebrush, the agriculture, Kinda grows on you, I guess. <laughs> also, our sunsets are just so unbeatable here. I cannot think of a better place I've lived with better sunsets. The area is kinda pretty in its own way. And you learn, you learn to have some gratitude for it. I never thought I'd miss it here. I mean, I guess spending seven months away from home freshman year of college kind of does that to you. I've always been hella sentimental, hella sappy, 
Uh, I will hold on to thank you cards, ticket stubs, and wrapping paper like they're my most treasured possessions. I say I love you way too easily and way too quickly. And all my life, I just wanted to leave everything I knew for the city. I never thought I'd develop attachments to a place. N nostalgia is a powerful thing, and with nostalgia comes the ability to long for familiar places and familiar people, remembering fond moments, all while pushing away bad memories and somber thoughts. And even when you're better off in the present, even when you want to look off into the future, you can't help but take a quick glimpse back. I visited my high school for the first time since senior year pre-quarantine, a place I never actually got to graduate from. And I have both good memories and bad memories from those four years, but I mostly remember the good ones. Hello, old school, stinky portable. My kick-ass teachers, my lifelong friends, made the good ones, and they're the people who made me, made me the successful person I am, with the values I have, with the passion I have, and without their love and support, I would never be here where I am today, which makes me love the place where I come from, because they gave the people I have in my life. When I tell people I want to come back here after undergrad for a year or two, they're always surprised. I mean, me from a year ago would be surprised. Post-grad, most people expect me to stay in DC or go to New York or LA or Seattle at the very least, and you might think it's because, well, you know, her family's here. And that is true, uh, but there is also family within the community. Uh, a community I didn't realize helped shape my character, my values, and me as a person until I left it. Family is the most important thing to me. I love my family even though they're not perfect, and it's a tired routine called love. Yeah. Okay. The hardest thing I never anticipated was being away from my family. I don't think I realized how nearly 3,000 miles, three time zones away felt. Uh, I feel guilty when I can't watch my brother grow up in his last few years of high school. I want to be there most when they need me there most. I, I can't. I know I'm happier and healthier now. But there's days where I feel so bad for not being able to be there for my family because I know they'll always be there for me. Something I want to do is give back. Not because I owe anyone anything, but it's a small token of thanks that would never be able to live up to what was given to me. I want to be able to take what I've learned and experience and share it here. And maybe to a kid who had dreams as big as mine and to let them know their dreams are big enough to become reality. So yeah, I'll be back. Bye for now, but not forever.